Hang falls in love with Katara as soon as he meets her, staring longingly at her. He imagines they will be together one day, and he tries his hardest throughout the series to make that happen. In The Fortune Teller, he asks his friend Sokka for advice. Even though Sokka knows little to nothing about romance, and the one time and the one time he was kissed was when he was not trying to be so cool. Not surprisingly, Sokka's advice fails, and Aang does not succeed at getting Katara to notice his affections for her. Even after they kiss in the dark, in the end of episode 202, The Cave of Two Lovers, they're still not together. Katara regards this as a one-time thing, and Aang reluctantly agrees. Aang again fails to confess his feelings for Katara in episode 218, The Earth King, because Sokka disrupts his awkward advances. Does she know for sure that he's in love with her before he kisses her in episode 310, The Day of Black Sun, part 1? We don't really know. The show is not always clear on where Katara's heart is romantically. But when he kisses her, she can doubt no longer. And she is left wondering what to do with this new knowledge. What to do with the fact that he likes her romantically. When they aren't together after the invasion plan, Aang becomes frustrated. In episode 317, The Ember Island Players... He asks her why they aren't together, and when she says that she's confused, he responds by kissing her. Disturbed, Katara draws back. Aang later castigates himself for his actions, but the lesson he later learns is to try, try again. Because after defeating the Fire Lord, Aang and Katara stroll to the balcony of Iroh's new tea shop, the Jasmine Dragon, and they kiss. This begins their relationship, which lasts until Aang's death at the rather young age of 60-something. Young, at least, relative to past avatars such as Roku and especially Kyoshi, who lived about 200 years. Aang's persistence has paid off, but why does he want to be with Katara in the first place? What draws him to her? Is it just that she's the first girl he saw after being unfrozen? It can't be only that, right? Right? Well, let's investigate. Before I go further, I would like to explain the position I am approaching this from. As you may know, if you have watched my other videos, I am a fan of the Zuko and Katara pairing. And I have been critical of the Katara and Aang pairing. So why am I making a mostly positive video about Katang? Is it because I have suddenly, miraculously, undergone a change of heart? Well, no. But I decided to make this video as a challenge to myself. Avatar draws heavily from philosophical traditions that teach that the dichotomies and dualities we perceive the world in are illusions. They don't really exist. Instead, there is unity, continuity. Guru Patik sums this up to Aang in episode 219 in one of my all-time favorite lines from the show, a line I regularly quote to people, even when I'm not directly discussing Avatar. The greatest illusion in the world is the illusion of separation. Influenced by this spirit, I want to try and give the Katara and Aang pairing its due, and contemplate why Aang loves her. Think about where he is in his life at the start of the show, the last thing he remembers is running away from the only home he has known because he is afraid the monks are going to send him away to a different air temple. This decision to run was not the best choice, 
and it's not like his separation from Monkey Atso would have lasted forever. But again, he's 12. True, he is a smart kid, as Zuko says, and he is compassionate and he's sensitive. But he's too young to properly face the duties burdening him, and he demonstrates this. He emerges from the iceberg, and they ask him how long he's been in there. He says it's only been a few days, even though in reality it has been about a hundred years. Everyone he knew, everyone he cared about is dead. He believes he is responsible for the war that has been raging the last hundred years. Could he have prevented it? The answer is not definitively yes. The only one whom we know for sure could have prevented the war is Avatar Roku, who chooses not to kill Sozin because he still has lingering affection for Sozin, his childhood best friend. But the idea that the answer could be yes, that Aang might have been able to save the people he loves had he not run, weighs heavily on his psyche. It's debilitating. To a certain extent, this is a classic hero's journey story. What he has to end up doing is accepting responsibility, and being brave, and fighting for a better world while holding tight to the values he cares about. It is done well enough, but what I love about Avatar is how it takes the sort of long-form storytelling only possible in a television show, and uses it to explore in depth Aang's everyday handling of his grief and sorrow. We get to see how he responds to it, and how it relates to his yearning for connection, and who best provides that connection? Katara. By the end of the third episode, she calls herself his family. He loses himself in the Avatar state, becoming nothing but a force of pure destruction and energy. But Katara is not afraid. She steps in and calms him down, and this is not the only time she does this. Think of episode 211, The Desert. Aang is distraught over the loss of Appa, so he basically leaves them all to die in the desert while he searches for Appa. And when he comes back, having failed, he's more miserable than ever. But Katara pulls the team together. She helps Aang. She encourages him. And at the end of the episode, when he goes berserk and once more enters the Avatar state, when he confronts the sandbenders that killed Appa, everyone else runs away from him. The only person who doesn't is Katara. Again, Katara is always there. But also think of her kind words to him in episode 212, The Serpent's Pass. He is mired in self-loathing after his berserk episode at the end of 211, and he responds by withdrawing inward and giving into apathy. But Katara urges him to keep caring. She says that, yeah, it's hard, but there's nothing more important. Those moments may not be as flashy as the ones where she brings him down from the Avatar state, but they are just as important. No matter what he does, she is always there for him, just like the monks were. Now, I am not saying that Katara's love for him is the same as the monk's love for him. His love for her is the kind of all-consuming romantic attraction that is uncommon if you're not, number one, the protagonist in a hacky third-tier rom-com, or number two, a kid around Aang's age. <laughs> There's nothing he wants more than to impress her, to get her to notice him romantically. But his love for Katara is also not altogether different from his love for the monks, and the show even makes this comparison. When Guru Patik is talking with Aang about how old loves are transfigured into new loves, Aang first sees the death of the monks he cared about, and then, out of the fog, he sees Katara's face. 
The energy takes new shapes, but the energy itself does not change. It is not too different from Toph's comment wherein she wonders if friendships can transcend lifetimes. Regardless of why Aang originally fell in love with Katara, he stays in love with her because she takes care of him. She's there for him, she protects him. She makes him feel less alone. Even when he's being sullen, she reaches out to him. Listening to what he has to say instead of harshly judging him. Think about episode 112, The Storm. Katara makes a comment about how Aang could not have stopped the genocide of his people even if he had not run away, and Aang angrily rebuffs her. He says she doesn't really know what she's talking about, and she doesn't argue with him. The facts are more on her side, and if she wanted to argue, I think she could win. But that doesn't matter. The truth is that he is hurting, and she can clearly see this. And she wants to help him. Instead of fighting with him, she empathizes with him and helps to heal his pain. Aang appreciates this. Yes, he is a happy-go-lucky kid. Even after what he has endured, he is still as cheerful as ever. Trauma does not shape his psyche, unlike in the case of Zuko and Katara, and he does not pretend to be more okay than he really is, unlike in the cases of Sokka and Toph. At the bottom of his soul, he is still a naive but good-natured pacifist kid. But the reason why his spirit isn't broken is that he has the other members of Team Avatar, especially Katara, to take care of him and be there for him. He has the reassurance that no matter what he does, no matter what situation comes upon him, the person he loves the most in the world will be there to help him. And that's a beautiful thing. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching Avatar The Last Airbender. It is a brilliant, clever, evocative show. And the fact that so many people can have such diverging interpretations of this that are nonetheless still backed up by the text demonstrates just how rich and varied and just lush the text really is. This is one of the best shows of all time. You can have a thousand people who watch it and have a thousand different interpretations and still think that a lot of those interpretations are valid. It's that kind of show. Well, anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.